Hello and welcome back to Math MT, the show where we talk math and drink tea. I'm your host, Professor Joseph Van Hai. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about an area of mathematics that doesn't get a whole lot of attention. Most people don't know about it. It also uh, happens to be an area I work in. That area is ergodic theory. In an earlier episode, I talked about the mathematics behind predicting weather and predicting climate. Now, both climate and weather are measurements of chaotic systems. However, climate takes advantage of averaging, and that makes it much, 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 much easier to predict climate than it is to predict the weather. And that averaging behavior is kind of what ergodic theory is all about. To be more precise, ergodic theory is about the long-term statistical behavior of dynamical systems, which is a bit of a mouthful. Ergodic theory is also about indecomposable dynamical systems, and yes, the two are related. Well, let's talk more about them. To begin talking about ergodic theory, we first have to talk about dynamical systems and what they actually are. Now, I'm going to start very abstract, but I'll quickly move to a concrete example. A dynamical system is a mathematical object that evolves over time. It consists of three things, a space, a transformation, and a measure. Technically also a sigma algebra, but that's really complicated and we're not going to get into it. More concretely, a space is a set of numbers, points, or some other kind of interesting objects. A transformation is a function which takes one of those objects and returns another object from the same space. And a measure is really just some way of measuring the size of sets within our space. For our concrete example, we'll take the space as being the interval 0, 1, our transformation as being 10x mod 1, and our measure as being Lebesgue measure. But of course all of that relies on some very technical definitions. You can think of the space as being the set of all numbers between 0, inclusive, and 1, exclusive. Our transformation is multiplication by 10 and then subtracting off any integer part until you're back between 0 and 1 again. And the measure, well, the measure of an interval from a to b will be just b minus a. We'll keep it simple. Now this is a fairly standard dynamical system, one I happen to study quite a bit. But what it does is fairly simple. It takes a decimal expansion, that's your usual base 10 expansion that you're used to, it shifts everything forward and then <laughs> lops off anything to the left of the decimal point and turns it all to zero. Let's give an example. Say we start with pi. Well, okay, we can't really start with pi because pi is greater than one. But if we start with pi minus three, then we start with the decimal expansion, 0.141592265, and so on. If we apply the transformation to it, we first push the decimal position one to the right, remove the one, and are left with 0.4159265, and so on. We can apply the transformation again and get 0.1592635. As we keep applying the transformation over and over again to a point in the set, we get the orbit of that point. And so when I say that ergodic theory is the study of long-term statistical behavior, what I mean is that we're trying to understand what that orbit is going to look like. How often will it visit certain parts of the space? Will it distribute nicely, or will it tend to cluster around a certain place? For example, we can look back at the orbit for pi minus 3 and ask how often it visits the set from 7 tenths to 8 tenths. This set, by the way, is the set of points whose first digit is a 7, and the transformation just keeps shifting digits forward. So when we ask how often the orbit of pi minus 3 visits the set, we're really asking how often do we see a 7 in the decimal expansion of pi. And believe it or not, that's still an open question. We don't even know if the answer is infinitely often or not. So why should you care about the digits of pi? I mean, they're beautiful, they're awesome, they're neat, but okay, there's probably not a direct physical application of knowing about the digits of pi, at least none I'm aware of. But this dynamical system that I've introduced you to exists as a simple model for more complex phenomena. After all, many problems in physics can be phrased in the language of dynamical systems. For example, we could use a dynamical system to study an object's movement. For instance, the space could be the positions and velocities of the given object. The transformation could consist of saying, well, I know it's here and traveling that way. Where is it going to be and which direction will it be traveling one second later? Okay, and then you need to have some measure, but that's complicated. The orbit now is going to be measuring the long-term movement of that particular object, broken up into one-second intervals. When I ask how often is the orbit going over here, what I really mean to say is how often is the object going over here? In fact, it was precisely 
these kinds of questions arising from statistical mechanics and statistical physics that gave rise to ergodic theory in the first place. And ergodic theory is extremely powerful. We have to know very little about our overall dynamical system before we can start saying a whole lot about those orbits and where they're going. These lead to the so-called ergodic theorems, and we'll talk a little bit about the pointwise one. Before we do, however, we need to define two more concepts. The first concept is measure preserving. A dynamical system is measure preserving if this particular rule is satisfied. And you can think of this as saying, applying t to a set does not change the measure of that set. Okay, really we're applying t inverse, but that's there for a technical reason again. Secondly, we need to define ergodicity, which would be really handy since we're studying ergodic theory. The condition here says that any set which is basically unchanged by the transformation must either be almost everything in your set or almost nothing in your set. Why is that important? Well, if it weren't satisfied, then you could break the space into two sets, and the orbits from a point in one set would never visit the other. In other words, you have two big dynamical systems which were just kind of glued together in an uninteresting way. Ergodicity essentially says that a system can't be broken down into smaller pieces. Ergodicity is indecomposability. Now for the ergodic theorem. A simplified form of the pointwise ergodic theorem says that if our system is ergodic and measure-preserving, then for almost all points, the frequency for which an orbit visits the set equals the measure of that set. Now that is pretty cool. In our example, this says that for almost all real numbers, they should visit the set between 7 tenths and 8 tenths about 8 tenths minus 7 tenths, or 1 tenth of the time. That is, we expect to see 7s one tenth of the time. Let's go back to our physical example for just one moment. So we've got some object and it's traveling around in space. We want to know how often it visits a particular area. Like maybe it's an asteroid and we want to know how often it gets close to Earth. Mm -hmm. So you have something you want to measure and that means an experiment. You have to observe what's happening to that particular object over a very, very, very long period of time and then average out to see how often it will visit that particular area. That's typically pretty expensive and time-consuming. Whereas with the ergodic theorem, if we know the system is ergodic, we don't have to do any of that. We already know what's going to happen in the long run. However, it's not like the ergodic theorem is all-powerful. Remember, we still don't know that much about the digits of pi. We don't, again, know whether or not 7 comes up infinitely often. That's because the ergodic theorem doesn't work for all points it works for almost all of them. There's always a small set of points for which it's going to fail, and unfortunately we don't have a good method of telling which points are in that set and which points are not. And that's one reason, one of uh, many, why ergodic theory is still studied to this day. But that's been enough for this episode. I should get going because, um, yeah, I'm out of tea again. Bye.